Guess who's coming to the MCU? That's right, we now know that Kate Bishop will be appearing alongside Clint Barton, Hawkeye, in the MCU and will be played by none other than Haley Steinfeld. Not everyone may know Kate Bishop, but in the comics, she's a pretty important and influential character, especially when it comes to the new current wave of young heroes and when it comes to Clint Barton himself. Today, we're going to get you up to date on Kate by shining the spotlight on her in this list and learning just what motivates her and what makes her tick as we count down the top 10 Kate Bishop facts you need to know. This list definitely hits the mark when it comes to filling you in on Kate, her relationships, hero teams, and her identity. So let's take aim and get counting. Number 10, Hawkeye. Get ready for two Hawkeyes because that is just what Kate Bishop promises to deliver. While we might refer to her on this list as Kate Bishop to prevent any confusion about who we're talking about between her and Clint, Kate is also known as Hawkeye. They are actually both Hawkeye. Kate first took up this mantle shortly after she was introduced as a character in the comics. Kate Bishop first appeared in Young Avengers Volume 1, issue number 1 in 2005, and initially actually actively disliked the idea of using the codename Hawkeye when it was first suggested. But just over a year later, in Young Avengers issue number 12, it grew on her, and she eventually took Hawkeye up as her superhero mantle. Want to learn why that name? Well, you can continue watching to find out. Number 9. Wealth Kate Bishop comes from a wealthy family, and while some people might think she initially must have some relation to Hawkeye's Clint Barton in order to take up the mantle that she has, she doesn't. Kate initially thought of her father as a role model and looked up to him until doing so got her entangled in a very dangerous situation. She ended up being rescued just in time while attempting to get out of that situation by the Avengers. It was then that she found herself impressed by a Hawkeye who doesn't have any superpowers and is just a, an amazingly skilled human. and ended up admiring him, making him a replacement role model for her father in a way. Following this, Kate became uncomfortable with her family's wealth and as such usually put some distance there, although it does come up in the comics quite a bit. The nice thing about Kate's family money and connections is that she often attempts to use both to do good whenever they do come up. And before we move on to this next point, just a quick reminder to give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. Number 8. A Hero Is Born So you might be wondering if Kate isn't specifically related to Hawkeye but was inspired by him, when did she decide she wanted to become a bona fide hero? What set her down that path? Well, it was actually a traumatic experience where she was physically attacked in Central Park that set her on the path to become a hero. To keep everything PG, I can't go into like all the details in regards to what was really happening during that event, but it's a powerful single page moment that you can find in the Young Avengers special one shot from 2006. And I would highly recommend checking out that issue in general if you want to know more about not just Kate, but also her team. Following that event, Kate sought help via therapy and also began training, learning not only how to fight, but also training even more intensely to become a master archer as well. It was both this experience combined with her aspiration to be more like Hawkeye that set her on the path to become a hero. Number 7. Young Avengers When it comes to Kate, a very important fact that you need to know about her is that she's not usually alone when it comes to her heroism efforts. She is definitely a team player and often is working alongside her fellow heroes and friends, the Young Avengers. This is definitely something important to consider, especially as she makes her way into the MCU, because this could obviously mean that alongside Kate, we could be seeing the emergence of the Young Avengers, which would be super cool. Some of the prominent members you'll also want to watch out for are Miss America, Iron Lad, Stature, Kid Loki, Wiccan, Hulkling, Novar, and the Mutant Prodigy. Kate was first introduced to the team when they attempted to save her and her sister's wedding guests, but created more of a mess in the process. And instead, Kate actually ended up saving them. That's just how awesome Kate Bishop is. The Young Avengers come to save her and she's like, actually, you guys need some help and I'm gonna save you. Number six, Cassie Lang. One of the most awesome things is that we're not only going to have Kate Bishop in the MCU, but we also get to have her alongside Cassie Lang, who in the comics is known as Stature, and who it's been hinted at will potentially also take up the same mantle in the MCU. Cassie and Kate first met when Cassie approached Kate after she saved the Young Avengers to ask them if she knew where they went. Cassie wanted to join the team and Kate decided to accompany her as she also shared Cassie's interest. She wanted to join up too. Both joined the team together starting off the beginning of what would be an awesome friendship. Kate ended up protecting Cassie during the events of Secret Empire after she returned from the dead. And the two characters have always had each other's backs in the comics. It'll be interesting if their relationship as best friends will make its way into the MCU along with them. 
Number five, funded by... Okay, so remember when I talked about how Kate comes from a wealthy family and how she likes to try to use that wealth to do some good? Well, yeah, here's an example of that. When the Young Avengers were first formed, Iron Man and Captain America were not really cool with it. They attempted to force the team to disband following the Young Avengers tussle with Kang the Conqueror. However, Kate and Cassie wanted to give the team another option. Kate used her connections to the fashion industry and some of her family's wealth to turn an abandoned warehouse into the Young Avengers lair and outfit her fellow teammates with Avengers inspired costumes. Number 4, Clint Barton. While Kate definitely looks up to Clint and the two have often worked together with Hawkeye Kate Bishop training beneath Hawkeye Clint Barton and even sometimes the other way around with Clint actually learning from Kate, they don't always see eye to eye. In the all new Hawkeye there is a lot more conflict when it comes to their relationship, giving us a different take than what we see in the famous Matt Fraction run on Hawkeye that started in 2012. Although to be fair, while Kate still sees Clint as a role model, she also doesn't mind calling out any any of his apparent flaws in that series besides. Their banter though is part of why the run and Kate herself are just both so great. Number 3, West Coast Avengers. So we know about the Young Avengers, but there is another team that Kate Bishop was a part of that needs to be mentioned simply because it is just so wacky. While less mainstream, it is a ton of fun and that team is the West Coast Avengers. This is a non-officially sanctioned Avenger team that was, in this iteration, started and led by Hawkeye Kate Bishop herself. The roster features some pretty charismatic and bizarre characters like Gwenpool, Kid Omega, Fuse, Miss America, and Clint Barton himself, who likes to insist that he's leaving the team any day now. Any day. If you want to check out this wild series featuring Kate's West Coast Avengers team, you'll want to check out Kelly Thompson's run, which is volume 3 of the series, which started in 2018. And it's short too, it's only 10 issues, so it's a good one to read I think, because it's quick, quick and wacky and fun. Number 2, Future Kate. Starting in All New Wolverine issue 33, a series where Laura Kinney X23 acts as the new Wolverine, we get to see an alternate future, Ooh, similar to Old Man Logan but much less depressing and much more optimistic. In this alternate future story, Laura Kinney is the queen of Madripoor but is also nearing the end of her life as her genetic code starts to become unstable. Here we also see a future version of Kate Bishop's Hawkeye who teams up with Laura to save her clone, Balana, and take on Doctor Doom. This version of Kate is just as sharp witted and as skilled and she's still got her sunglasses, which I love. This alternate version of Kate is not of course from the same reality as old man Logan, like I said that reality is a lot more depressing. This much brighter alternate future belongs instead to Earth 18366. And in that reality, we have Kamala Khan as president, and I kind of love that. I'm just like, this reality is so nice. Number one. Her mom. While Kate is overall a pretty bright hero, both with her purple costume and just in terms of her disposition, she still has some tragedy and darkness in her past. One of the more tragic aspects of her character is her relationship with her family, but more specifically with her late mother. When Kate was young, her mother, who was estranged from her father, ended up dying while on a trip to Boulder, Colorado. Kate's mom, we learn, inspired Kate's charitable nature and her desire to help those in need. However, it would later be revealed that her mom didn't actually die on that trip. But I don't want to spoil anything for those who have yet to discover the awesomeness that is the 2012 Hawkeye series, which if you haven't read it yet, you really need to get on it, especially in preparation for this awesome Disney Plus Hawkeye series we're getting. Seriously, check it out. When it comes to Kate Bishop, she is such a grounded and real character. There are just so many cool details about her that you need to know. Basically, you just need to get to know her as a person, a character, and a hero because well, she's just great. Are you excited to see Kate Bishop join the MCU? Let us know in the comments below. And speaking of comments, it's time to turn to some comments for one of our latest videos, Top 10 Deadliest Female Marvel Villains. Chris Debo comments, Good to see someone other than me remembers Moonstone. She was great during Dark Reign, then Marvel forgot about her. Shame. So true, what is Moonstone up to now? Also, I just love her like against Carol. Like I love that whole like sort of Miss Marvel off at the time. I kind of hope we get to see Moonstone fight Carol in the MCU, but uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. Mike Grill writes, just commenting to say I'm 100% down for more of these. I love a femme fatale. I also love a good femme fatale. And I'm also uh, just finishing up my first reading of 
the Fatal series. So I, when I wrote this list, I was actually like, oh my gosh, all I can think of is Fatal, but I'm not putting Joe on this list because she's not a Marvel villain, so it doesn't make any sense. And that's all the time we have for comments today. Be sure to comment below for a chance to have your thoughts and feels shouted out in a future list. This has been Top 10 Nerd, and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. You stay nerdy, YouTube.